Um, but we're going to be get started here in about one minute. Um, and I got uh, Eric Allard is on the line with us, and um, Eric is actually on the line with us uh, from the hospital. <clears throat> and uh, he still wanted to do the conference call anyway, and so um, he, he's uh, he's on the line from his hospital room. We'll kind of get into that a little bit, but um, we don't have a specific agenda plan for today, except Eric has made um, some pretty serious progress out on the uh, advanced seismic warning system on the antenna lines out in the desert, and he'll he can kind of cover cover some of that what's been happening in the last couple months. Um, so we're going to get started here in about one minute. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start muting everybody out. And then when you want to ask a question, um, just hit five star, and that will let me know to unmute you so you can ask your question. Okay, so it's uh, 2 o'clock right now. Um, Eric, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you fine. Okay. So um, uh, this call is being recorded. Uh, this is Aaron Murakami. Today is November 20th, uh, 2016 at 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, I have Eric Dollard on the line. Uh, he's actually in the hospital uh, due to a few um, health complications. So like I mentioned, um, Eric has made quite a bit of progress um, on the seismic line, and um, recently he was on the road and, and was in Lone Pine and had to get checked into the uh, hospital, and uh, he, he got flown. Uh, Eric got flown to a medical facility um, where he's, he's you know doing okay right now. So... I don't know, just since you wanted people to at least know, you know, kind of what was going on, Eric, do you want to explain a little bit uh, about about the, the health concern right now, and then we can kind of get on? Yeah, to well, it's, um, it, I started with uncontrollable bleeding when I was out in the Mojave end of the project, and then I went in the emergency room, and they found out that my body was not generating any more blood and that I drained much of myself out and was emergency flown to a major hospital in northern Nevada where it's been determined that my bone marrow is no longer generating blood, so they have a process. They're going to have to put me through all this therapies and what have you, and I guess it's some kind of cancer situation, but I've been assured that they're going to get me back out in the desert again here before long and I don't really have anything to worry about so so that's good but it takes me away from things for a while but I kind of need a break anyway so so I'm not really having any worries or anything to complain about right now right. and it's something that's uh, commonly um, easily treatable is yeah that's that's basically <clears throat> what I've been told so the treatment is known to be effective, and and then I have my own methodologies and what have you that that I you know restore my body when it gets into bad situations. So it's scary, but uh, but I have confidence in the people here that that they're going to get everything set right, and they feel confident. So that's uh, just uh, part of getting old. And so um, up up into the point to where you, you had to check yourself into the hospital, um, you and uh, a few other people, including uh, one or two people from the uh, last energy conference, had actually come down there to help you on the, um, uh, the antenna lines out in the desert. Um, you know, maybe share with everybody kind of what, um, what kind of Yeah, yeah, we started. actually we actually made quite remarkable progress. Um, it was about a 30-day work effort because of uh, because of this thing that uh, has got has knocked me into the hospital bed. I wasn't really able to keep up like I would have liked to with everybody, but uh, but at any rate, we got a lot done. Uh, Justin got the wires on the cross arms for one fourth of the Alexanderson antenna, so we have one element of the Alexanderson antennas complete. All the uh, damaged utility poles have been replaced with uh, the exception of one. Uh, the one-mile long Alexanderson antenna system, the poles are in and the design is laid out. We have 
the one twelve hundred foot section up and uh and we were able to outfit the Corolla with all the necessary analysis equipment to make a, a video presentation of what's going on inside the earth both uh man made and uh and natural and uh and it's kind of a tragic situation there is so much stray power line electricity flowing in the earth from this aberrant utility company in the state of Nevada that uh, the interference is roughly 16 million times stronger than the signals generated by the Earth. So it seems like this antenna project is going to be more of studying the, uh, the aberrant and parasitic behaviors of the power grid in the state of Nevada than it is in determining exactly how the earth signals operate but unfortunately that's what we're stuck with but there's ways to get around that and we were able to get significant earth signals out of the system when we went outside of the power line frequency band and the harmonics so so basically this being the test site it's going to be mostly the mathematics and the phasings and and uh, Alexanderson principle in general that will be studied, and it will have to be the the other facility in the, the other desert, the Mojave Desert, where the interference isn't so bad, where the utility companies have some level of sanity left, and the interference isn't a problem. But we have another problem out there is uh, this species that's starting to invade the desert, which I refer to as moto filth, which I think is a very mitigated name for what it is of ATVs, motorcycles, and devil trucks are repeatedly uh, vandalizing and mutilating our terminals. Uh, we have to bury all of them underground, and a lot of damage was done. But but the facility there that we're experimenting with is is a buried cable facility, so it can be made to be protected against this mechanized human insanity that's eating away at the surface of the earth. And when the other end, we have the uh, electrical insanity that's causing literal rivers of electricity of hundreds to possibly even thousands of amperes of current now are surging underneath the earth over a very widespread area. This is going to be an interesting study to see how bad this situation has become. And uh, it will be part of the topic of my next presentation, which is going to be titled The Theory and Practice of Polyphase Power Transmission. And I think the findings will stun the audience. Now with the... Um uh, power line interference, when you say getting around it, is it as simple as just um, putting some type of filter for those frequencies? Well, the problem is is the earth signal frequencies that are of importance are the same as the harmonic frequencies of the power line, so we're going to have to use some more exotic techniques of uh, of taking the interference in in one coordinate system of reception this was it's being shown on the video and then uh, in that coordinate system the earth signals are absent and then then amplifying and attenuating and doing various things to make it match the interference that uh, that's in the earth signal part of it and phasing it out but the intens as, as shown in the video, is the intensity of the electrical disturbance in the ground is so severe that uh, that by that mode, the the telluric mode is reception will most likely be absolutely impossible. But using a, a refraction electrostatic mode, where there's no current loop through the ground. Uh, we were able, with the uh, apparatus that Steve McGreevy specially built for this project, to get acceptable earth signals in the 
in the audio range with a, a minimum of of power line harmonics mm-hmm. and then we can phase the uh the other reception of power line harmonics with the absence of earth signals and cancel it out so so the system can can pick up the uh the audio frequency earth signals but it will not be able to do it in the telluric mode we cannot do it with ground currents we only can do it with the electrostatic field that exists above the surface of the earth that relates to the ground currents so it's going to be one way or another it's going to be an interesting study so basically like i say this is the test site which is really to analyze the over overall alexanderson principle and uh and if what can't be used for receiving can always be used for transmitting so there's the power line thing opens up its own study and there's many other avenues of the alexanderson mode of transmission and tesla modes of transmission that uh, will be unaffected by the power line problem because they'll operate several octaves above that frequency so we demonstrate that in the video by using the two prominent very low frequency transmitter signals one is the uh, navy submarine broadcast system that uh, operates out of uh, jim creek i think it's in washington state i'm not certain and then there's wwvl out of fort collins colorado so so it's actually we've got our first readings and it's starting to get exciting now that uh that once the next element goes up we can start introducing the loading sections and we can start doing a complete scientific analysis of this whole process so we're uh we're all very very happy that we've reached this point so <clears throat> from this point what 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 are the next steps well first the video you're mentioning um um, I should be able to pick this up sometime today. Um, there's a copy of the video that Eric is mentioning, and there's also a whole bunch of uh, photographs of the project. And so um, if not today, then tomorrow I'll have my hands on this, and I'll be putting this up on YouTube, and, and these photos and everything will be posted on Eric Dollard's site, uh, which is ericpdollard.com. And that's where the um, the video and pictures of what Eric is talking about will be posted. Um, let's see, it's two twelve right now. If uh, you just joined us in the last couple of minutes, um, um, Eric Dollard, um, he is in the hospital. Uh, he had some uh, uh, some issues, um, health issues that we already covered at the beginning of this call. So we're not going to go over that again. Um, but just to let you know, when, once this is on YouTube, you can go back and listen to it. Um, He's doing just fine right now, and everything looks like it's going to be okay. Um, obviously, it is a it is a concern, and um, Eric has just been reviewing the progress on the um, the seismic project out in the desert with the antenna lines, where they were able to pick up uh, some of the um, uh, earth signals, and that's what's going to be on the video that I'm going to be posting here um, in the near future. Um, now, even with the power line interference, it's um, you know, kind of a hindrance there, and so it's not really going to be an earthquake monitoring station, but will be more of a test site. But there is a second site in a in a secret location that um, is that in a more suitable place to where that would probably actually be used for earthquake forecasting. Or to yeah, that one is is in uh, it's in the place where it's very close to uh, a major communications uh, relay site for a major public utility company. Uh, the public utility companies in that area are rational, and uh, even though we have one of the biggest power lines in, in that part of the country, which plows right through that area, being that it's operated by a rational utility company, even though it's a 500,000 volt, 2,000 amp, three-phase power line, uh, produces only a fraction of the interference of the 12,000 volt power line that uh, is adjacent to our right-of-way in the other desert, which produces 
roughly one million times more interference than the 500 thousand volt power line which kind of shows you how ironically uh, rational utility companies massive multi megawatt power line almost a gigawatt power line produces only a fraction of interference of a distribution power line operated by a irrational idiotic utility company which uh, unfortunately is representative of most of the utility companies in the United States. And the the telluric harmonic problem is getting so bad now that uh, it's actually starting to short-circuit the grid, and uh, and people are getting uh, electric shocks off of their plumbing. So we're looking at a situation here where the power grid in the United States is uh, is going to basically become an absurdity, a danger to itself and the people around it, and it will be an excellent receiving antenna for any type of nuclear EMP and designed specifically to deliver it to the wall outlet in your household. Before we open up for questions, is there anything else that you want to cover? Or <clears throat> Well, that's the main, the main thing. That's what's going on, so... We'll, um, we'll bore into it now. You know, we're at the point in which we can start doing scientific work with the facilities that we have available to us. Mm-hmm. So um, Eric's website is ericpdollard.com. The middle initial is P stands for Paul. So ericpdollard.com, um, in the right column, um, there's an address in Lone Pine, California. It's a general delivery address where you can write Eric directly and um, almost always he'll write you back. And um, there's also a, um, uh, a PayPal uh, link where if you do want to donate by PayPal, um, uh, you can use that link. And, there's, um, and so um, you want me to go ahead and open up the questions, Eric? Yep. Okay. So if you have a question for Eric, um, it's only 2.17 right now, so we have uh, – uh, we have enough time to, to cover quite a bit. Um, depends on what everybody wants to ask. So if you do have a question, hit five star. That will give me a little sign next to your um, phone number, and I'll unmute you. So um, if your phone number ends in six zero eight, uh, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead and say your name, where you're from, and go ahead and ask your question. Hi, my name is Adam. Eric, I'm one of your supporters. I have a question, please, that, forgive my ignorance. The Alexanderson antenna, does that use the longitudinal wave? Yes, that's a, uh, it's a telluric system that is not electromagnetic. It uses the same type of uh, longitudinal magnetodielectric wave that the Tesla system does. Okay, thank you. I'll I'll be looking into that more. So next time I'll have something intelligent to add. Any any more questions, Adam? The the floor is yours. Okay. Okay, Okay, um, let's see. If you have any questions, uh, just hit five star. Um, Nobody's doing that right now. So if nobody has questions, it's going to be a short call, but... um, Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you and lower your hand. Go ahead and uh, uh, introduce yourself and go ahead and ask your question. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Perfect. All right. So, uh, hey, guys. Hey, Aaron and uh, Professor Eric. My name is Ennis. I was actually one of the MDs for just a year back, and um, uh, I just had a very quick question, actually. Um, I've been obviously following Eric's work very closely, and uh, recently, one of the uh, new proponents of Professor Eric's work is a man by the name of Ken Wheeler. He has a, uh, a YouTube channel called The Angry Photographer. And uh, he's a little bit obnoxious, kind of difficult to understand. But what he's done is essentially um, re-summarized Eric's work and uh, very boastful about, it, about his, it being his own personal discovery. But he actually provides a lot of interesting diagrams that are kind of similar to the work that I've seen in... Um, uh, Walter Russell and also Eric Dahl's work. So I was just wondering if uh, Professor Eric have, has ever uh, heard, of, heard of this man, seen his work, and 
whether or not he would um, either give it a go in terms of using it as a tool to, you know, uh, better help the mind understand the non-physical stuff because he does, uh, um, of, of the electric theory, because he does offer a lot of diagrams that kind of, I guess, lend the mind with an illustration to kind of deeper hone the understanding of what's going on behind the curtains. And, you know, in this journey, it's difficult to kind of, I guess, go about this on your own because you're always just pondering on what you think is the archetype that's going on. At, but uh, really, you got to, um, I guess, explore further and kind of juxtapose what you, um, I guess, encounter to until you somehow um, come closer to the reality. So, yeah, um, that's my question, really. Did, did you get that, Eric? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what this other person is doing because I don't have any personal contact with the Internet or I have to rely upon what people send me in the mail. So well, Eric. If, if you wanted to send me some information about it, uh, you know, I could, could make my determination of, uh, you know, whether it was insanity or if it made any sense or... I'm absolutely, cer- I'm absolutely certain that, you know, there's going to be a bunch of people that are going to claim, you know, that they know everything about it. And, and uh, like, what's this uh, Constantine Mile is the, uh, he's the big Tesla, uh, the te- big Tesla wrong direction right now. So I would imagine others will start to pop up for, you know, whether deliberately or on their own or, that's why I kind of just do my own thing in my my ignorance of the internet, so I'm not distracted by it. Well, I, but one I, thing, one thing. Go ahead. This uh, who he's referring to is Ken Wheeler. Remember him? Uh, From yeah. The last couple years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember him. He's uh, he's the Greek translator. Right. So he. Um, yeah. He was posting in um, energetic form for a while. This was before he he wrote me to offer to put out his book and stuff, and even use it to help raise money for Eric. You know, so in in, in that sense, he was, he was made a very generous offer. Um, we were just busy at the time, but if you go back and look at some of the posts that he made in energetic form, and even in some of the YouTube um, posts from quite a while back, um, he's very clear about giving Eric credit. Um, and, and being very open about the fact that it was uh, a lot of Eric's work, which was um, very instrumental in him coming to what his understanding is. Yeah, I, I talked to him extensively on the telephone, and he he seemed uh, reasonable to me. So actually, I'm I'm more interested in his in his uh, in the Greek stuff than than any of the other stuff he's working on to help me understand the things of antiquity of music and all, all that kind of stuff. So, but I haven't heard from him in a long time. Right. Well, I'll, I'll give you his phone number later if you want to touch base with him when you're back down at the shop. Yeah. I, I actually have it. Okay. And yeah. did you ever get a copy of this book? I don't know if anybody ever printed it. No, no, I never, never. He said he was going to send it or whatever. And then, then he kind of, kind of went off the air or I haven't heard from him and I'm not particularly too inclined to call anybody because I'm just yeah. you know wrapped up in already in what I've got going on my own so right. as far as far as uh, there's been a lot of effort on the part of, of several people I know who are in positions to to help implement this uh, the seismic warning system we've found uh, that there's an alternative system that uh, is quite effective employing magnetometers I talked to the person at Stanford University that discovered it and then I have some people that I'm working with at NASA uh, on this and uh, it's just simply there is a complete blockage to any implementation of any type of event seismic warning system. It's almost on a, a, a psychological pathology level. It's just it's not going to be allowed to happen. And, and, and that's, that's the hard, hardcore reality of the situation. 
mostly because of mental disorders and uh, and not really due to the suppression, which is uh, the the uh, United States Geological Survey is the main suppressor of this work. NASA is actually one of the biggest innovators I've discovered in a lot of these type of things, and, and they keep getting pushed aside. And the scientists uh, seem to have a mental disorder that uh, all they want to do is write papers and produce theories and... Uh, and there's just a complete blockage to bringing this to an engineering level. And then on the the other end, uh, the utility company engineers are very interested, but uh, they can't get the executives to go along with it. And uh, and it, you know, as we've all gotten together and talked about this situation, I regard it as hopeless that uh, that anything is going to be implemented before California gets the big kick in the ass. Uh, did, did you have any more questions? <clears throat> oh, uh, yeah, actually, um, <clears throat> if you don't mind, I'd love to have uh, one more follow-up question. Uh, just a little bit more on the topic of uh, Ken Wheeler, not exactly about his work per se, but um, one of the things he uh, actually uses to demonstrate his knowledge or understanding of the situation is a device called a ferrocell, cell. And um, although it's not something new per se, because I've seen magnetic films before where you can, uh, you know, put magnets and actually have the unseen world, so to speak. But this particular ferrocell cell that he uses is based on uh, optically flat glass that has very finely, I think in the nanometer range particulates, um, ferro particulates, uh, which makes obviously the, the ferro fluid layer. And uh, it's, actually insane as to the kind of depth and projection of, of the image that shows of the actual magnetic fields that are involved or if they even are the magnetic fields which is actually what my question is if eric has seen these pictures and seen these um very interesting i guess you could say um images of the magnetic fields, if you could comment on whether or not those are the actual structures of the magnetic fields, or oh, as I, I believe i don't want to quote, uh, be quoted for this exactly but i believe ken Miller says that they're actually the counter spatial fields that are being shown as a result in the image. So I, the only reason why I'm asking this question is because um, I know a lot of this stuff is not exactly physical. I mean, the other half is completely not in the physical realm. But for me, at least, when I'm trying to understand these things, I try to find, I guess, uh, similar analogies that I can kind of play in my head and, you know, not be able to get into the details per se, but still have a, a, a mental grasp over the actual forces involved or else the math doesn't come fluid to me it's just me trying to, like, memorize formulas, and that's not really, like, how I enjoy moving about things. Do you have any comments on that ferrofluid cell, Eric? Well, I haven't. He hasn't sent me any of that stuff yet, so, you know, I was expecting that, but... Uh... I, I need to I need to see this stuff myself before I can say anything about it. I mean, it sound, all sounds very interesting, but but like I say, he just dropped off the air and never sent me any of the material. And I don't use the internet, so I have no way of, of finding any of that stuff. And so I'm uh, I'm awaiting his uh, his material, and then then I can comment on it. Now you're, <clears throat> so you're asking about the ferrofluid cell. Um, I mean, you were at the conference downtown Coeur d'Alene in 2015, right? Yes, sir. Uh, what's the, the big guy? With the, uh... Yeah. So, I mean, you remember the um, – remember I had one of those, that the guy who came up with those sent me one and, and actually – Oh, right. Yes, yes. Yeah. So um, after mm -hmm. you were up, um, you know, next to me on stage, I, I showed that thing and had it in the back with all those photographs and stuff. And so I don't know if you saw that, Eric, but I had one sitting on a table in the back of the conference when we were at the doing the conference downtown Coeur d'Alene, and it was round, maybe, I don't know, maybe four inches in diameter, and, and I could plug it in, and it was illuminated by LEDs and yeah. uh, placed magnets around it, and you would, you'd see the different patterns and stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I, think I, I, vag I think I vaguely remember that, but I was so wrapped up in, in trying to get my presentation together that... Right. I was pretty much absent for the rest of rest of anything else. 
Well, see that, if, that presentation uh, that presentation was particularly difficult to put together, right. and it was uh, you know I was pounding away on it right down to the last minute. Yeah, as far as I know, that was the first public demonstration of one of those because um, I don't recall his name right off who who, who was making those, but um, he sent me one to to kind of put out there. But next time I come down, um, I'll I'll see if I can just bring that with me, and we can you can play with it and see what you think. Yeah. So, yeah, because uh, I, rem- I remember in one of the uh, live calls that were a bit earlier, there was a man. Who... Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I remember in one of the live calls that earlier, I think this was months back, there was actually an individual that was talking with uh, Professor Eric with regards to um, trying to frame formulas for this stuff so they can simulate it in three-dimensional, uh, gra- I guess, um, modeling so that people could get a better grasp of what was going on and um, I mean I've seen magnetic films before but this thing was giving like four inches of holographic projection depth so I was um, I was baffled and uh, they were definitely not the same kinds of I guess you could say archetypes that you'd normally see in um, what you see in a magnetic film like there was just so much going on I don't know if the light was maybe adding to it or I, I wasn't too clear of the phenomenon and if you go to the website it's actually uh Feral cell, uh, yeah, feralcell.us. He has all the uh, the stuff there, and um, it's he himself says that he doesn't exactly have it quite pinned down of what exactly is going on. I'm just shocked this thing hasn't gone viral. I mean, just from it's a visual perspective, it's very aesthetically pleasing and uh, definitely mysterious, even for those who aren't really dabbling with the whole electrical realm of things. But yeah, uh, if there are no questions, I do have one more follow up. But if I have to wait in line, I don't mind either. Um, yeah, with that ferro cell, I think it, yeah, it was on one of these calls where I think he offered it up, and then I connected with him, and he sent that to me. And the film you're talking about, like that green magnetic viewing film, um, it, it does definitely give um, uh, another depth um, compared to the green fil- viewing film, which all that green viewing film, by the way, is actually all manufactured here in Spokane, Washington. Interestingly Interesting. Enough. But, um, yeah, if you have another question, go for it. Okay, so this one's a little bit weird. Um, I've, during my studies, of course, we've all, I, you know, we all wander in our journey of trying to understand things. And uh, I had a mini Integratron moment, not necessarily working on something, um, you know, that was really, you know, out there as the Integratron was. But um, a friend of mine was talking about a man, a Canadian man, a man by the name of uh, David Hamill. And, uh, you know, I'm not really a UFO enthusiast. I know Eric hates that stuff, um, like the dark, but what the way... Um, one of the interesting things about him is that he, there was an engineer that actually uh, went up and investigated the work himself. And um, I don't want to get into it too much, but there are two phenomena that were documented that occurred with this device that I wanted to actually just ask from afar. And it does, it can be phrased in an electrical engineering question, I guess. But uh, one of the main things that is uh, described by the engineer is that when there are two, uh, when in the device, there are two magnets that are in the position of attraction to each other, but they're not let to attract per se they're kind of teasing at a distance and then made to dance in circles and then they're they're they're, it's in a container and there's air that's flowing through and so the air is moving past the point where the two magnetic fields are kind of dancing with each other but they're connecting and what's described is that there's actually a form of ionization that occurs from the air that exits that point so what, what i wanted to know is that um how can that be framed from an electrical engineering understanding and can that be framed from electrical engineering and sending? Um, does that actually follow up with the the theory of how things actually go about? Well, I don't know. I have to see what what you're talking about before I can comment on it. So I don't, I'm not familiar with what you're talking about. David I would have to some, uh, some information on it. And, and you're saying this relates to the Integratron? No, basically, um, it was just for me as a personal moment, it's just one of those things where um, there was an engineer, engineering reality to something, but at the same time, uh, the nature of the study was kind of framed in this really uh, es- esoteric realm kind of way because there was more involved to the individual that was claiming about what was going on than just what uh, you would normally see in, the, in an academic venture or whatever it may be. So that was just me kind of introducing the topic. It doesn't really have to necessarily, it doesn't really uh, have to do anything with 
the intensitron, but just simply put, it's um, just two magnets that are in attraction position. They're not touching each other. They're just kind of um, standing apart away, and they're held like that, and then there's air blowing in between the space where the two fields are kind of colliding but not snapping together. And the claim is, is that the air that enters that zone where the fields are and exits, it gets ionized. So I just wanted to know whether or not that's actually a reality. I mean, I'm still conducting Yeah, that I, I, don't, I mean, I, I, I don't know. You know, there's people say these things and whatever, but I, I can't comment on that stuff. I don't know anything about it. So, you know, all, all I basically know about is what, what I've experienced and what I've researched. All these other things, I mean, you know, I've, I've kind of, I've had to shut most of this stuff out because it's just a distraction. It's just there's all these little anomalies and people claiming this and that and and I, I don't have time for that. I, I have to stick with business, you know the things that that I've already determined. It's just if if you like what all this stuff really what does is I've determined in the long run is it just pulls you off the main path. Everybody has all these notions and ideas and then you know. UFOs and all the rest of the stuff. I mean, I went I went through all that with Borderland, and uh, and it's just it's just all distraction. That's what I regard it. You know, I mean, I, I might be right or wrong, uh, but I can't. Uh, it's just you know, there's a sea of this stuff. It, it'll just it just lead you through Brownian motion into uh, a path that goes nowhere. I, I just have to reject the whole thing. Yeah, I agree. The the, the realm of speculation doesn't do much good uh, to the reality of things. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I, see, I don't know. You know, I see the situation. You know, I mean, okay, here, here, you know, I'm with Aaron, and then somebody brings in the free energy machine. It's this 800 pound behemoth. Oh, his free energy <laughs> machine secrets or whatever, you know, and. Uh, and you know you can't move the thing, and and half the stuff's missing. And then uh, myself and I believe uh, it was Paul Babcock, you know, sat together and and analyzed this, and 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 basically what it is, it's a dummy load for human energy. Is uh, it's just you know, you want to throw another ten thousand dollars down the toilet bowl? It's fine, you know. I mean. The, the the plumbing will accept it, but uh, it's a distraction because that's the, what, what that that the, this monstrosity allegedly has done has already been accomplished and videotaped in uh, that first Borderland video with myself, Peter Lindemann, Michael Knotts, and Chris Carson. It's already been done. So why flush, you know? time and energy down the toilet bowl for somebody's crazy idea. I, I don't have time I for agree. that. I have, to, I have to stick with Tesla and Alexanderson and, and all that kind of stuff and, and not, not get involved in random noise. I mean, I'm, I'm trying not to be an asshole, but, uh, but I have to be realistic about the situation, particularly being, you know, how many years of my life do I have left you know, glaringly evident, laying here in a hospital bed with tubes in my arms, uh, you know, to be fooling around. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, I, I appreciate the response, and um, it's definitely a reminder for myself as well not to get distracted. Uh, definitely there are a lot of people who have come with their own claims, and um, it's really not just about making a claim per se, but it's following through with those who, you know, left the foundation behind that actually gave the world something like the way Tesla did and whatnot. So exactly. I appreciate the response. Um, if there's time, if I can give one more question, I don't know, Aaron, um, if there's anyone else in line. Yeah, go for it. Perfect. Okay. So uh, one, one particular person who's actually, um, you know, well known for his work as well and, has been mentioned uh, rather faintly in a lot of your presentations, but I know for a fact um, you do see some uh, value in his work is uh, Dr. Walter Russell. And uh, yeah. he's really one of those guys that's uh, 
you know, it's almost as if uh, his work is just one of those things where I feel like there's just so much that's important in it, but because he, uh, I guess, came across the work from a very deep experience that's just beyond the veil of, of the seen world of, I guess, if you may. And, um, and so his duty was to attend to explain the process that um, exists in a wor- world where words don't exist, kind of. Um, and so I've been really trying when you're, when you're when you're dealing with Walter Russell, you know, you're going back to the world of, of the presentation I gave in the in the uh, was the, uh, the ether is related power ether is related to music and electricity. You're going back to Robert yeah. Flood. You're going back to the Rosicrucians. You're going back into uh, uh, the symbolic rather than the uh, the vectoral and and geometrical aspect like a rose with uh, Johannes Kepler and what have you, uh, which is co- naturally going to be extremely repulsive to scientists and engineers and what have you that are based on the, uh, the Kepler principle rather than the flood principle. So the value I see in, in Walter Russell's work is, is symbolic. It, it's, what, it's what it does to your mind. Not not what it is buildable out of it, but it, what it does is it causes it opens your mind to a certain uh, coordinate system or what have you, and it makes you think. It's it's more like music than it is, uh, you know, physical theory. If you understand what I'm saying. Definitely, I feel like it's almost as if his work gives the mind the necessary easel that it can paint on of whatever it is, uh, you know, the actual picture that it's supposed to be looking at um exactly there was uh, one there was one diagram that i saw that you know had quite an impact on me because i experienced this at my research facility at landers is there was a uh a massive uh uh cumulus uh weather formation that was attached to some kind of telluric activity underneath the earth and it was exchanging immense quantities of electricity and lightning was just shooting straight out into the sky and the signals I were getting were the most wild sounds I ever heard and it was this uh, double conical which uh, which Russell uses a lot and of course you know the double conic is the very arch form of, of all engineering mathematics and uh, and he had portrayed this in the formation of a tornado which I know are electrical in their their nature because they have a specific signal that I can pick up thousands of miles away. I can even, you know, determine their existence on the bottom of the band on the AM radio in my car. I use that in in the lack of any other equipment to, to let me know what the Earth's doing because the thing will go nuts before an earthquake. And... Uh, and there's this mirror image of the tornado inside the earth and that was the diagram he had a four or five step diagram i think i even used it in my presentation of uh of how this process begins and uh and it was amazing to see that you know that somebody had portrayed this on an artistic level and it was just so accurate to the whole process it had kind of a psychological impact on me and it helped me visualize what you know i had experienced through my instruments and what i saw happening out in the desert and landers yeah definitely i've experienced something uh, very similar as, as well um especially after reading his um the universal one book because basically he all his books are literally edits of his previous versions until you get to the new concept of the universe and it's just how he portrays things. Like he's, uh, it, it always boggled my mind because every single time I finished the book, I never felt like I understood what he was saying, but it was almost as if my own receiving band of intellect was widening and I didn't really understand why. But then when I, you know, it was just his manner of thinking. It just, you know, it lended the mind a tool that just uh, made the things that were always painted to me complicated become very simple. And um, even Tesla, in some of his articles, when he describes things, he always says, according to my simple mind, you know, the way he thinks about things uh, and uh, that whole natural philosophy outlook of things as well. So it was definitely uh, like the way you've just phrased or summarized uh, Walter Russell's work is exactly what I would tell to others. I mean, some people will go really deep into it with the spiritual side of things. And again, 
the man is just talking about things that are far beyond the reality right now. I mean, most people aren't even connected to themselves, let alone the things that are beyond themselves. And uh, it's definitely dangerous to kind of tread with his work because you can really get lost in some of the deeper meta- uh, metaphorical ideas that he's trying to paint to you. But um, I definitely agree, especially with the tornado diagrams. I've seen it. There's a clear diagram of telluric energy uh, at the. It's it's just like the uh, the Earth's crust, so kind of, or the surface of it at least is the equator, and then the um, the atmospheric phenomena is basically a reflection of what's going on in the, the interior of the Earth, and it's kind of like this dynamic system that creates that weather phenomena. And definitely, as soon as I've seen the diagrams, it made all your work with the earthquake research so much more easier to understand because I was always thinking when I see a hurricane, I always see these NASA images of these huge clouds just, you know, rotating with a force just beyond conception. And, but I always wondered, like, how can someone pick up a signal thousands of miles away from a phenomenon that's really happening above the ground? And uh, that was just the eureka moment right there. And uh, it was just, it was really brilliant. So definitely he's been a good aide um, in terms of helping me uh, boil down the concepts more to something, uh, that can, I can illustrate within my own mind and uh, make the math much more easier. So I, I definitely agree. Yeah, that's the, that's the value of his work. You have to remember that he's an artist. He's not a mathematician. So he's trying to portray his ideas on an artistic level. Not, they're not particularly suited to be expressed in words. But, uh, but the diagrams, are, they, they connect. That's what's important about it. Yeah, it was very uh, synchronistic, I guess you could say, that a man who supposedly had the, the opportunity to see behind the veil uh, just also happened to be, you know, a phenomenal artist who did sculptures and paintings for some, some very, very famous people. And if you see his work, it's almost as if the ghosts of these people are just coming back at you. It's truly phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, it's and really, so, you know, he has, he, he has, I think he has a bust of, uh, of Thomas Edison, and it's... Uh, you know, it's something that Edison would really be proud of. So he's a, oh, very, only... uh, he's a very, very good artist. He can really capture that, uh, the aura of what's going on. Yes, it's almost as if the details of what he's staring at possesses his brush and, and it takes it away exactly where it needs to be. It's truly phenomenal. And uh, his work, to me, when I appreciate it, it's much more... It's, it's more, the depreciation is deeper than just the serotonin going off in my head. It's like, I feel something deeper within me, um, and I'm definitely inspired. And he always talks about how the concept of inspiration is not something man can do per se, but um, can provide a medium through work that uh, in turn can then inspire others. But it's, you know, it's kind of a philosophical thing. I don't want to get lost into it trying to explain it. I mean, I'm sure he did a better job than I did uh, just right now, but... Uh, for sure. He's definitely been a, a very good mental aid, and he's one of the people that I've put in the clear when it comes to understanding your work, because, um, you know, as, uh, he, he has, there are, there's a letter of him talking with about, actually, uh, Nikola Tesla uh, to someone else. I, have, I haven't been able to verify the letter per se, but um, just in his beginning of the book, when he, as soon as I saw Tesla mentioned into it, and the fact that both of them consulted each other, I was just boggled, because, I mean, Tesla, apparently, I've, I've never been able to fully look into the core, and I wish I could so I can have more, uh, you know, uh, be, be more assertive with providing this piece of uh, information. But he said that Tesla essentially told him to take his work and lock it away in the Smithsonian for a thousand years until humanity was ready to understand it. And to me, that was just the most, that was the moment that gave, that let Walter, that let me give Walter Russell a chance. Because, uh, I mean, if that was said by Tesla, then God knows what the, uh, uh, you know, Walter Russell himself understood about things. And, uh, yeah, it, just would be, nice. be it would be interesting to try to find verification of, of, you know, these statements because a lot of these things are just, you know, said by people arbitrarily. But uh, it would be interesting to see what kind of connection there was, if any, between Tesla and Walter Russell. But the thing I, I want to point out is, you know, don't think of Walter Russell as an isolated individual. I really recommend going uh, back to ro- the work of Robert Flood and uh, – and what he was trying to portray and uh, what he felt in, in his time, which was way, way back there in, uh, I think, the 1400s, 1500s, uh, that this was something that was generally understood, and he regarded himself as the last 
of uh, of the people that that have this the power or this verser diagram power to uh, to actually make things happen the voodoo voodoo level reality which today is completely disregarded but there's that aspect of things that's what I got into in that music and electricity presentation was to try to give an overview of that whole subject. At any rate, it might be good. You know, other people have questions on other things right now. I think we've covered this pretty thoroughly. Definitely. I appreciate your responses. Thank you, and I hope you feel better. Um, go ahead and uh, uh, state your name, where you're from, and uh, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, hi, Aaron. Uh, this is Jeff uh, from... Uh, uh, down south. Uh, sorry, I couldn't make it to the funeral, but uh, I sent uh, Steve along, and he uh, he said uh, he met everyone and thanked everyone. Uh, yeah, I met him. Thank you. Yeah, um, Eric, uh, uh, are you? Uh, can you say what your health problem is? Yeah, I have uh, bone marrow cancer. Okay, um, I have an expert. If you'd like that, I can get in touch with that's flying around with Trump right now. Would you like to? I'll I'll try and get hold of them as soon as possible. What can uh, can you have Aaron email me the details? What's going on? Yeah, I mean I, I don't want to get into that topic too much on the air, but no, no, but just have know, Aaron I, I contact think you by it's, email. It's, yeah, yeah. If you want to do that off the air, I mean I'm I'm, I'm going along with the program here, uh, but you know any additional information or you know I, I have my own methodologies that I'm going to employ at the same time to try to enhance the situation and uh, minimize, you know, the prospects of failure. And, uh, you know, if there's other things, uh, you know, that you can relay to Aaron and then Aaron can relay them to me, that would be good. Call me, uh, if you can, back on this number, if you would. Yeah. You can see the, you can see the number, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll just, you just email me, Jeff, with your... With okay, your all right. Yeah. Okay, guys, that's all I need. I, I, I'm, I, I would stay longer, but I, I don't want to. I'm kind of shocked right now. All right, uh, thanks. Bye. Okay, Jeff. Okay, thanks. Um, let's see. Does anybody else have a, a question? Go ahead and hit five star, and I'll go ahead and unmute you, and you can ask your question. Um, we're at two fifty three right now. Um, so we're getting close to an hour. And so if uh, nobody has questions, we can wrap, wrap this up in a minute. And uh, uh, not sure when we're going to be able to do another one. So, again, uh, you know, Eric's website is ericpdollar.com. Um, in the right column there, you can write Eric a letter directly at his uh, Lone Pie and General Delivery address. And um, also, if you're able to um, want to support the work, because it is moving forward, and I will be posting the video and some pictures of the recent uh, progress on the um, advanced seismic warning system, um, uh, hopefully sometime by the end of this week. For, um, uh, and I'll be putting that video up on YouTube and putting that on Eric's page. And uh, also, if you want to uh, make a donation and kind of help uh, move things along a little bit easier, um, there's a PayPal button there where you can um, uh, donate to the project if you want. You know, it is a... EPD Laboratories, Inc. is a 501c3 charitable nonprofit registered in the state of Nevada, so it's a legitimate uh, tax-deductible donation. And so do um, you have anything you want to add, Eric, or any any requests from people or anything else? In the, no, I think I pretty much, pretty much stated everything that's going on on this end. So okay. I was hoping there would be more questions on the subject, but I guess there isn't. Yeah. Um, okay, so that last chance, if anybody has a question, otherwise we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap that up. Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and uh, everybody right now, we can go ahead and uh, wrap it up. I don't know when we're going to be doing another one of these calls, but we'll definitely be posting any updates and, and look forward to the, the video and pictures of the latest progress that Eric shared with you about the uh, the seismic project, and I guess with that, um, I'll, I'll just get a hold of you Eric, uh, later, Eric. And just so everybody knows, I was originally going to um, uh, just put out an email to cancel this call because um, uh, Eric is in the hospital, um, uh, and it, 
Eric insisted that we still do the call anyway because he feels good enough and uh, and wanted to do it. So um, anyway, thanks for that, Eric, and uh, and thanks everybody for being on the call. Thank you, Eric and Aaron. Hey, thanks everybody. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Eric. I'll, I'll get in touch okay. with you later. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.